Hey guys, it's Julian from Beneath the Bunk Studios. I hope you're doing wonderfully. Today, we are discussing my super fast workflow for working with and auditioning different e-drum sounds. Let's get into it. So here we are in Cubase. We got a pretty basic session that I set up just for this video. Um, I got a really generic loop from Arcade and uh, laid down a simple 808. Didn't really want to come up with anything crazy. Um, I just needed something to illustrate my ideas here. This is what I came up with. So like I said, nothing special at all, just good enough for me to show you guys what I'm talking about in this video. And this is a workflow improvement that I recently made and I'm really excited about it because it just makes everything so fast. Um, so first of all, I'm using um, Battery by Native Instruments to do this. And as you'll see, the way Battery works is you have a bunch of different cells and each cell contains its own drum sound. So everything in red over here, as you could hear, is a kick, everything in blue, is a different snare sound. Everything in this one, I guess it's kind of a pink, <laughs> um, is a clap. We got our closed hi-hats, open hi-hats, rim sounds slash miscellaneous percussion sounds, I guess, in purple. And then we got um, a pitch down version of a hi-hat uh, for the light blue over here. For the little rolls um, where you like to have those fast little except it's pitched down and not the normal pitch. Having these drum sounds organized in different categories is the first piece of the puzzle. The next piece of the puzzle is checking out the key ranges that I have set up below each uh, drum. So for this kick, we have C1. For this kick, we have C2, then we have C3, then we have C4. For the kicks next to it, starting at the top, we have C sharp 1, C sharp 2, C sharp 3, and C sharp 4. And then the rest of the drums follow suit. So we have our snare, D1, D sharp 1, D2, D sharp 2, D3, D sharp 3, and then it goes on throughout the rest of these. Now let's move over to the MIDI and let's talk about the drum map that I have set up in my template that goes along with these mappings. So if you look along the left side of the screen here, you're going to see kick A1, kick A2, snare A1, snare A2, and you'll notice that they align um, very simply with the drums that are within battery. So for example, kick A1 is this kick. Kick A2 is this kick. And then we have your kick B1, which is this kick. You have your kick uh, B2, which is this kick. So it's pretty simple. And then it repeats with the snare, it repeats with the clap, it repeats with the closed hi-hat, and everything else. So how does this look in practice? How do I use this? Well, what I like to do is get a basic pattern that I think is works with the song. So we're going to solo the drums here so you could hear what I have going on. Um, I'm not too pumped on the sounds. I like the snare. Um, I like the hi-hats. I think the kick is the main thing I would change. Where my map and my settings within battery come into play here um, is that I can very quickly audition different kick sounds throughout this map. In fact, I have eight different kick sounds um, that I can audition just like that, um, which is very nice. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So I'm going to press play here, and then I'm just going to move these kick hits while they're highlighted using the arrow keys on my keyboard. Um, between different kick sounds and between different octaves so you can hear different sounds. So let's start out here. So you get the idea. If you didn't understand that, just you could see that with another uh, kit piece. Let's say I didn't like this hi-hat and I want to switch it. It makes finding drum sounds so easy because what I did here is I just took some of my favorite sounds from different sample packs and then just put it here. So if I'm working on something that requires e-drums, I'm going to know that I'm probably out of these all these sounds going to find something that I like to use um, that will get that will allow me to lay my idea down. Um, and then if I want to change the samples later, I can easily do that just by going in this browser over here and moving things over. Last thing I will say about this, if you're thinking about giving it a shot, um, the key is to make sure that you are going through each sample 
and leveling them out so that no matter which sample you play within context of the beat, the sample that you change it to is still gonna work within the context of the kit. So for example, let's say I started with this kick and it works great, um, but then I wanna switch to this kit and audition that, but it's quieter. So what I could do is I level each individual cell. So for example, this is at negative 0.9 dB, this one's at 4.1 dB, this one's at 1.5. So I went through and changed volume levels on each individual sample so that I could know that if I want to audition something, it's gonna sit well enough for me to tell if it works with the song. And I did the same thing with the snares and the claps and the hi-hats and everything else. So yeah, that's pretty much it. This was a pretty short video, relatively speaking, but it's a cool trick that I just started implementing into what I've been doing. And uh, I felt like it really helped me a lot and I felt like it could help some of you guys. So let me know if it did. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. And I will talk to you later.